Hello, everyone, and thank you for taking time out on a Saturday. This is Saturday, November 9th, and this is Classroom 2.0 Live. I'm one of the co-hosts, Lori Moffat, along with Peggy George and Tammy Moore. Uh, well, thank you, Tammy, for doing the closed captioning for today. Our special guest is Shelley Terrell, and she's going to be talking about YouTube video editing tools. This is a live binder for today, and one important thing about the Classroom 2.0 live binders is the tabs are on the left-hand column rather than across the top for the pages inside the live binder, and Peggy has put the link for the live binder in, in the chat. All of the recordings for the shows are posted at this website at the Archives and Resources page. Peggy's also placed that in the chat. And we always like to find out where in the world you are logging in from. Uh, I am in central Pennsylvania. If the um, pointer doesn't seem to work, you can always type in the chat where you're from. Usually we have folks from around the world, and we do today as well. It's always nice, nice to see where everybody's coming from. Peggy's from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I know Tammy's from Southwest Arkansas. On this slide, I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy. Good morning, everyone. It is so great to have all of you with us, and you are in for a real treat today. I love that I get to see all of the slides and resources in advance of our shows because I know what's coming, and we're so excited to have Shelly with us. I uh, put this slide up last week, and it came at the very end of the show, and many of you had already logged off. So I'm putting it at the beginning of the show because I would love to get some of you involved in our show, more involved. Um, and we're looking for just several really enthusiastic, connected educators who are regular participants in our webinars to form an advisory team and to help us in any way that you feel you can. The advisory team is especially important to me because there are so many amazing educators out there doing just wonderful things, and we want to bring them on our show to share them with all of you. And it helps to have a, a broader base of people contributing to that list of people that we can invite. And there are also lots of behind the scenes tasks that go on getting ready for the show. So I'm not asking you to commit to anything right now, but I would love to know if you would be interested in serving on the advisory team and would like to learn more about it. And if you would indicate that on the survey at the end of the show, just write it in one of the comment sections that you'd be interested in knowing more. And then I'll set up a session for all of us to just get together. I'll share some of the things that I'm thinking. You can share some of your ideas, and we'll get something set up. The, the minimum um, requirement would be a meeting once a month just to chat together. And then there will be some other things, like if you're awesome at creating images, we need to create a new image for every show, and I would love to have some help with that. They can be done well in advance, so let's talk. Please let me know if you're interested in doing that. We would love to have you. Thanks. Thank you, Peggy. First polling question, are you able to use YouTube in your classroom? This is a yes or no answer. And this is the, the polling tool underneath your name in the participants list, not the one here. This one doesn't work. All right, it looks like we have lots of votes. I'm going to go ahead and post that. 
And out of the people that voted, which is over half of the room, all of you can. All of you can use YouTube in the classroom. The next polling question, have you used the YouTube video editing tools? Again, it's yes or no. And again, I will post that. And a little over half have not used the video editing tools. Our next polling question, have you or your students created videos to upload to YouTube? And I will post these as well. And it looks like almost half of the, the group has created videos, or the students have created videos. So that's information that Shelley will use with her presentation today. So today's topic is YouTube video editing tools. And uh, Shelly Terrell is our special guest for today, so welcome, Shelly. Shelly Sanchez Terrell is a teacher, trainer, author, and international speaker. She's been recognized by her peers and various notable entities, such as the Elton Awards, the New York Times, Microsoft's Heroes for Education, and the BAMI Awards as a leader, innovator, and visionary in the movement of teacher-driven professional development and connectivity. She's the co founder of the award-winning hashtag EdChat movement, the Free Reform Symposium Global e-conference, the 30 Goals Challenge for Educators, Virtual Roundtable Language and Technology Conference, and various SMOOCs. She has trained teachers and taught learners in over 20 countries and has consulted with organizations such as UNESCO Bangkok, the European Union A Planet Project, Cultura Iglesia of Brazil, the British Council in Tel Aviv, A I A T E F L Slovenia, HUP, Croatia, and the British Council in Southeast Asia. She's the host of American TESOL's free Friday webinars and regularly shares technology tips at Teacher Reboot Camp and on Twitter at Chell Terrell. Keep an eye out for our upcoming book, The 30 Goals Challenge. So the newbie question for you, Shelley, is why is video creation and editing important for students to learn? And during the show, I will capture questions and ask them at the end. Hello. I've had a lot of great discussion already in the chat box. So thank you for coming. Thank you for spending a Saturday with me. I do see that we're a worldwide audience, and I'm really excited to be learning with you today. If you're new to video creation and editing, one of the reasons why it's very important for students to learn is because today, a lot of times when they're in their future jobs or they're applying for higher education or even when you're thinking of applying for scholarships, online scholarships to conferences, or when you're thinking of uh, applying for uh, application for college or anything like that or an organization you want to join, um, now they do allow videos. So if you could do something where you show and highlight the things that you do or your passion or uh, things with video and you can make a great enticing very short video, two minutes, three minutes, then there's a lot of times that that will be your end. That will be what gets you to get into that. And we want our students to succeed. We want them to be able to have those opportunities, especially if they are low performers or they don't have access to a lot of technology. But you'll see that a lot of them are on YouTube. A lot of them worldwide are even familiar with YouTube. And even in places like China where they can't access YouTube, they find a way to access YouTube. So um, those are one of the reasons why I think video editing and creation is really important.
So I guess I will begin. Thank you for the very, very nice intro. A great job, Lori and Tammy and Peggy. I'm so thankful that you had me come today and share this topic. Um, I want to start by, <laughs> for those of you who are new, um, I've seen from different countries, Israel. I was recently training in Israel, by the way, um, and in other countries. I've been to 26 countries. I love meeting teachers. Right now I'm in Atlanta. Usually I'm not in Atlanta. Usually I'm in Texas, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, but I, the one thing about webinars, and you'll see here, is that we get to join from all over the world. And we even get to join in our jammies. So I do have my jammy pics can fly to pass on. Um, I'm staying with Nancy Blair, let her teach on Twitter. So she'll even confirm this. <laughs> uh, PD in your pajamas, professional development in your pajamas is what they say. But since it's a Saturday morning, I want to have a little fun with you. And um, I know a lot of times this presentation is not meant to be a cure-all or, or uh, something like a prescription that is going to work in every single class. I don't know each of your situations, so it would be impossible for me to step in. It would be impossible for me to really be able to, to tell you this is the, what you're supposed to do. What I want you to do instead, be open-minded see something, one or two ideas. It's like a buffet. You come in and you see all this great, wonderful food or a feast, but you only have one plate and it's small and it can't fit that whole entire buffet there. So what I want you to do is take a few of the items that you say, this is really yummy or this is really delicious. This is going to help my learners or this is going to help me. And this is what I'm going to try in my classroom. Try one of the ideas. Um, because, <laughs> and I learned about this website today, you can always learn, okay? Um, you <laughs> what I say, Kim says, I take two plates, is that wrong? <laughs> Some of us have a bigger appetite than others. <laughs> you can always go back for more. That's the great thing about a buffet. <laughs> um, but I don't want you to think I'm a techie and that because I know so much knowledge that I'm not going to relate to you. Because all the idea is to try. And I work with teachers all the time. And some of them have never even used YouTube. So even if you're a beginner, you can always find something that you like. Don't, don't worry. And if you don't like something, you can always press this button. You might be able to hear it. I was always thinking of a fun way to kind of be in a presentation. <laughs> um, why video? Video is the way that we learn. It's the way that our uh, new, our students are learning. It's their way of learning. And if you look on YouTube, and if you even go there for um, uh, for a, a week, and you observe, and you just look at all the students that are on there. They create their own games. They create their own learning ventures. They create choose your own adventures. Students are learning on YouTube without us. They are flipping their own classroom. They are learning outside the classroom walls. Sometimes they'll come in and luckily, you know, sometimes they'll even ask us different kinds of ways to learn with that. But one of the reasons why they do this, why they create their own channels, they have millions of visitors on YouTube. And people listen to them and they create these stories. Right now they're doing this word story and millions of people are watching each of the videos and it's really wonderful. It's share your stories and they get little index cards and they're uh, posting up the index cards and they're sharing their stories and they're very heart-wrenching stories. I love them. I read them all the time. One of them was about a girl who got bullied. Another one I recently read was about uh, a teen who her dad was uh, an addict. Um, and they're sharing all these sad stories. But while I'm looking at them, because I'm an English language teacher, I see all the grammar errors that they're making. And I think, wow, this is such a powerful learning opportunity. They're sharing stories. They're telling stories. They're using writing skills. They're doing their objectives. It's personal. It's relating to them. And if they did this with their teachers, if they did this with me, then they would be able to go and they would be able to put up these videos that were grammar free, that tell the better message where people didn't uh, see all the grammar errors within that. So I think for us, we can tap into this power. And the thing about it is they're very moving. A lot of times I cry at these. 
uh, because I'm so touched by them and, and all the things that our students have to go through. So video, it, it, it contextualizes the world and especially if you're working with low literacy, if you're working with autism, with um, ADHD, language learners, um, the visual elephant, uh, element and the, vi and the audio, they make it to where the student is immersed in the story. They can visualize the language they can contextualize it, so it's really important. Um, and you can use this even in skills in the future, because whenever you're going to the future, um, jobs, and when you're applying for applications and all of these things, then being able to edit your um, edit something is very critical thinking, and we constantly have to edit ourselves. Um, even when we're on a resume, when we're doing a curriculum vitae. Um, you have to choose and pick what is the best thing that you want to put forward. You have to tell a story so we can use what we see today and we can begin to help our students curate that story and have a critical eye, decide, hmm, this is going to be something I really need to share, this is going to be powerful, or this is how I need to align it or set it together, or these are the visual elements that are really going to make it come together. I'm not going to be able to cover everything. This could be like a whole day workshop and we'd have a lot of fun because I've actually done this in various places. I've done this in Israel, I've done this in uh, Brazil, I've done this in lots of places and we've had a lot of fun playing with YouTube. And so we're going to play a little bit with YouTube today, but not so much as I would like. So you can go to bit.ly YouTube tools and Peggy has been really great and put all of this on a um, pin, um, shared the Pinterest board. But one of the things I do want to point out with the Pinterest is um, you could go and you can see my other webinars. So I actually have three, four, five webinars that really take you into this. So this is, um, so if you want to get more into it and you say, wow, that's a really good idea, I really want to do that, or something like this where you want to teach it with young learners. So I, I share with you the best people in the business, the ones that are using free videos and actually teaching their students, their four-year-olds, their five-year-olds, their six-year-olds, their two-year-olds, through video on YouTube. There's a lot of parents, they share hundreds of videos uh, on YouTube and then lots who are doing it with teens and adults as well. So you can see all of that. I recently did on the, uh, one of these webinars, they're all recorded, they're all videos, they're 30 minutes and you can see them. You can even get a certificate for watching them uh, from American TESOL. You just go to the bit.ly address and you'll find it. So let's begin the adventure, let's start. So one of the things about YouTube, when you have a video, and you can test this with any of the videos you have, uh, one of the webinars I did do was how to create your own YouTube channel. And that's one of the best ways to learn. And um, one of the things that I like um, is, is when you create a YouTube channel, then it directs your students there. And a lot of times, um, if you share a playlist or something like that, you can share that playlist on a blog, you can embed it on a blog. Um, Yes, Vanessa, you asked a very good question. You said, do these editing tools work on an iPad? Um, you have to actually get a browser. There's specific browsers that go with Splashbase and things like that. See, or an app. There are apps that will allow you to do these kind of things, but you, you wouldn't be able to do it directly from YouTube. In other words, you'd have to have a YouTube account first. That's one of those. A lot of times you can get a YouTube account with, um, sometimes you can get a YouTube with uh, different things. You can do it with, um, oh, okay, somebody recommends Huffin Browser for Flash. Oh, thank you, Marie. Um, but you can, you can do it with Yahoo, or you can also do it with, um, you can do it with Yahoo or Google now um, to create a YouTube channel. So it's up to you. So, so you can use, uh, I don't know if, it, if you knew that, but you don't have to necessarily have a Google account or um, a Yahoo account. You can have one of them and then also be there. So the first thing I want to share with you is Chris was talking about Creative Commons and he was talking about um, posting something and then infringing copyright infringement. YouTube has realized that this is really uh, a problem that students have and so they've taken all these videos and they won't be, um, they, they ban them a lot or they take them off and it's really sad because some of the videos that I have on my playlist no longer work. So what happened um, is, is now they have in their YouTube editor, and I recommend, you know, going to this in the browser, that's where you're going to be able to do this the best, but you can, after you do it on the browser, the great thing is your students can see this all mobily, you can give them a channel where 
uh, a list or a playlist they can watch every day on your YouTube video to learn from. Um, but one of the things they have is a remix. You can remix Creative Commons videos and add music. So when you click on the video editor, you go to youtube.com slash editor. You can go that way. It gives you music. Here we have I Want to Go. And let me go ahead and uh, highlight that for you. So you can see here, hopefully you can see that arrow. You see this is where all of these are, the different types of Creative Commons music you can use within the video. So those are the ones you want to direct your students to. They also have these kind of videos here. It says Remix Creative Commons videos. You have a beach, you have the flag. There's actually hundreds of these little clips that you can use. So that's the way you get away from copyright infringement. You use the things that people have uploaded. It's called a library. And all of these mean that you can use it. So once you remix this, and remix means you take something that somebody else created and you make it into your own. And our um, learners, our students right now, are part of what's called a remix culture, a remix generation. And they do very, very, very cool things with this. So this is one way you can get your students to do it through YouTube, and you don't have to worry about copyright infringement that way. Um, and it does have some popular songs and music as well. You can add images, transitions, and titles. Just like these look very familiar, if you've ever done any kind of video editor, then you might have seen these transitions, the crossbar, the crossfade, the horizontal, and the checkerboard. You can do that all within YouTube. In fact, you can upload, it says here, you can even add your photos to a project. You can add, um, just like you make a beautiful presentation with iMovie, with Windows Movie Maker, with um, Animoto, that what is the best part of this? Well, the best part of this is if you do it through YouTube, then you don't get the 30 second limit. So that's one of the things. And I'm very flattered. It looks like Wes Fryer is here. So I'm blushing right now. You can't tell me. It show, you can't see it, but I am. <laughs> Wes Fryer is one of the uh, greatest people to follow on, on uh, Twitter. So make sure to uh, follow Wes. Wes is incredible. And uh, the cur one of the curators of the uh, K through 12 conference, uh, which is free, and you can see the resources. So you can add images, transitions, titles, and text. Now I'm going to give you some ideas in a few of where it is to. <laughs> Your wife is here too. <laughs> so much pressure. <laughs> and of course you can see me. So if you were wondering what I look like, this is what I look like. You can go to my videos, um, youtube.com shall tell. Now I started using YouTube a lot more with students. I was flipping the classroom before they start saying flip the classroom. <laughs> and because I have language learners, and my language learners, I was teaching in uh, Germany six years ago. And my students, I found this problem that, um, and even when I was teaching in high school in Texas before that, is that they would learn English in the classroom and they would use it there, especially in a place like Germany. And then uh, when they went home, they didn't use English anymore. And that made me very sad. And I thought, oh, they're not going to learn the language if they're not immersed in it, if they're not using it constantly. So what can I do to make them really learn language outside the classroom? And it's the same thing with your school, whether you teach math, whether you teach science, whether you teach any kind of subject, the, how do you tear down the classroom walls and make sure that they're so interested in it that they can make ties to it inside um, outside the classroom. And one of the ways you can do that is through video. Video is a very powerful uh, method, and it's a lot of uh, times that's what our students are using to even express themselves. So this is what I began to do with my learners. I started making uh, videos myself, but then I got tired of making videos. It is too much time. It was way too much time. <laughs> and teachers who say you only flip with videos you make, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Um, the, 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 Get your students to make it. Use Remix other videos that others have created. How do students remix just like I was showing you? They'll find it fun because it has music and they love the music. And it's Creative Commons from, um, uh, from YouTube. So it, you get over that copyright infringement there because YouTube has made it available. Um, but use things that other teachers have used as well because it's too co time consuming. And with everything else, I think it's way too difficult to make your own videos. But try to make at least one video 
um, so that way you get the idea of what editing in YouTube involves because it's a really uh, incredible thing to do. So you can edit your videos with bottom row options. You can even upload one of your English videos um, or one of your videos as well and you can test it out. That's what I did with mine. So I did a bunch for the 30 goals. You can go see them there. Um, but you can do it with the bottom row options. You don't have to just go Previously, I said you could go to YouTube.com and then editor. So if you do that website slash editor, um, then you would be able to go and you could edit the videos. I think that's the easiest way personally. But if you bring up your video, you can even click edit and it's going to give you these options here. So you can go that way. And all of those, play with them. Have fun and play with them. Uh, there's different things you can do. Okay, so one of the ideas is you can have your students make a cartoon. They can make a cartoon about themselves. You can do a lot of projects with that. So you can have them make um, an animated cartoon where they are the heroes. That is one of the things that I've had them do. I do a lot of hero stories. Um, so they're practicing English, they're practicing writing, and they have to use where they, um, we call it ordinary heroes or everyday heroes. And so that they, what they do is they make it to where they're like super helper or something. And the kids go and they make these videos um, and they just they just make a regular video. They just record it with their cell phones. Um, I use their cell phones in class. Um, and they don't use anything else. They don't use an Animoto app. They don't use a, um, they don't use any kind of a Magisto app. They don't use any of that. And one of the reasons they don't use it is because of the time limit. Um, we only get 30 seconds, or we only get a minute. So if I want to do videos longer than that then I just help them make their own video on their phone. They work in groups of four, and um, they have this assignment. And what they're supposed to show is how they help somebody else, and that's how they're a hero. But then they get to go and they get to make it into a cartoon because they love making animation. So they can easily do this. It's very easy. You can, and the thing, the reason a lot of our students love different apps like um, interest, um, like Instagram, is because Instagram has it to where you can already do this. Instagram has it. It's only 15 seconds, but you can make a really beautiful, interesting video. So this one, here's one of the options. So this is the original. I took a picture and I even added a little caption because you can add a caption. I added a little caption that says "Everyone smile" or whatever. Um, here of my. Um, this was in Croatia, and um, they, this, the, one of the students had collected a bunch of, uh, loved having these, um, ha loved having these angry birds, had collected all these angry birds. So then what I did was I went ahead and changed it into a cartoon. So you can see the second pane, it even shows you what it looks like, and it's a cartoon automatically. So how easy was that? That was super easy. I didn't need an app or anything. All I needed to do with click on cartoon and make it a cartoon. <laughs> you can make it black and white. So let's say you're talking about something in the history. You can have your students dress up like historical figures. Or they don't even have to dress up. They can draw characters. They can do stop motion film. And all you have to do is when you upload it on YouTube, they click the black and white. Or they click the sepia. Or they click the classic. And all of a sudden, it's like that. Let's say you want to make a sci-fi film, and you put up all the characters. You put like a crab and a spaceship, and they're all the toys instead. It doesn't matter the props. And then when you open it up on YouTube after they've created this video, they just click here. They click this green filter, and it looks like it's sci-fi. It's all green. So with these filters, you can make a very believable looking movie. Now, how do I do this to make it a movie? Well, one of the ways that I make it a movie is I actually have my students go, um, and each of them puts this different scene. So how do we do this? Well, one of the ideas um, for, that you can think about is, for example, when you're in a textbook, let's say there's a chapter, and I've taught history to English language learners. Um, and one of the things that we taught was the 1920s. So for that chapter, I knew they don't know the 1920s. They don't even understand what it is. They have phones and cell phones and they text. So how am I going to make it to where they can understand? They can contextualize and they can uh, learn about prohibition and all of these things. So the 
thing that I have them do, make a movie. How do they make a movie? Okay, so they each take a section. I divide them in groups of four. Each of them gets a section. And that becomes part of the movie. In the end, because it's all on YouTube, then I put them all together. If they upload them to one channel, if they all upload them to my YouTube channel, then I can even edit and put them all together all on YouTube. I can do everything on YouTube. Um, so I also have Camtasia, so I do use that. Uh, that will be... Um, I should tell you that because a lot of times I will do video editing through Camtasia. But I'm saying that if you want to use something free, um, YouTube works very well for all of these just as well. There's also something called Lead Video, but you don't have to pay for those advanced features. So YouTube, you could do all of this through YouTube. One of the other ideas that I do is I have them do a slow motion film. Because in YouTube, you can slow it down. You just click this that says slow motion. And it makes it go slower. So you can make a, uh, one of the stop motion films. You can slow things down. You can make it go faster. I mean, it's really, really, really incredible all the things you can do with YouTube. You can even add it to where it stabilizes. So you know when your students, they're not the best film directors ever. But one of the elements you can do is you can have them go and they can, um, they can click stabilize and it stabilizes their video as well. They can even rotate it. So if they did it to the side in YouTube, let's say they did it horizontally and it's not, the pick isn't so great. Well, one of the things they can do is they can fix it. They can, they can rotate that picture and they can make it to where um, it's the way they want them to go. You can add Creative Commons music quite easily on YouTube. So um, you can either use the original audio or you can mix it. You just click on this little thing that says audio. So the ones I showed you before were under enhancements, okay? So it's sort of a lot like your image editor. And that's what I love about the YouTube editing as well, is if you've ever used your own phone image editor, something like um, Be Funky or uh, something like that. Or even the one that comes on the phone. On my Android, it says Enhancements. It looks like that. Um, if I use Pick Monkey, Pick Monkey looks like that. I think it has the same little wand uh, with Enhancement. So it works the same. You can kind of get an idea of what these little icons mean. Um, so Audio, you click on the little note. You want to do Audio. You can click on this little uh, box, and that gives you annotations. They're not the prettiest, but they're there. And then C, you can make it caption friendly. Caption friendly is really important as well. We have a lot of our students now who are, um, um, one of my adopted sons, he's uh, autistic. Um, and then I have another uh, student that I've worked with that are ADHD or who have listening problems or hearing problems. And I mean, there's so many things that you get in a classroom. So I no longer teach just language learners. That is not my learning need in my classroom. In my classroom, I have language learners who have dyslexia. I have language learners who are autistic. I have language learners. And so what, I remember when I was being a teacher without all of these tools before using um, YouTube and things like that. And YouTube has been so helpful with that because it's been one of the longest tools in the business. It's been one of the longest learning technologies. And it's something our students are used to and something teachers worldwide are used to. And so it's been one of those uh, tools that, we, that gets better because it learns what the user needs. And so it tends to try and get better. You can tell every time it's like, Oh, now you have more than 15 minutes <laughs> of video. Now you have, well, you can add music. I mean, there's so many things that it's always doing. Um, so uh, closed captioning and all of these things are very easy to do with YouTube as well. So here we go. We have Feel So Good. We have the chicken music. I, 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 it has every wedding song out there. Um, this is the one that's da 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 And then you do the chicken dance. But there will be no dancing in this uh, webinar. So uh, nobody do the chicken dance, please. <laughs> um, there's a big drum hit. Uh, and there's just a tons more. Your students can look for, it says, look, search all tracks, 150,000 total. So that's really uh, fantastic. You can do some that are instrumental as well. For me, when I first started using these videos, and I didn't even know about Creative Commons music on YouTube um, until I had to um, until I was testing these things out, um, and I went in and I started doing things actually for the 30 goals. You can see here one of my interviews, 
And um, so what I, I want to do is like test different things. And that's when I started learning about this. And before I would go to cc.org, um, ccmusic.org, that's where I always get Creative Common Music tracks, which are absolutely beautiful. Um, but all along, I could have saved all that time because that literally took me hours to do. And I could have just used the featured tracks that are on YouTube. So that's one of the things that I'm going to do now is go back. So annotations, what can you do with annotations? Well, one of the things is you can do speech bubbles. You can add notes. So if you want to do any kind of um, uh, titles, you can add spotlights and labels. What does that mean for you? That means very, very, very cool things that I'm going to show you. Um, so when, it, when you do annotations, um, in the bottom is where you can see those annotations. It has a timeline, so you can add how long you want that annotation. And that's very important. One of the things you can do is you can add a link. So you put a label. You choose the label one, and then you can put a label, and then you click link, and you add the link. Well, what does that mean? That means you can interlink videos. It is very, very cool. So now you see your students, if you look at some of their videos, and at the beginning of your ask them, say, you know, which one of you have YouTube channels, which one of you have YouTube videos. And a lot of times I learned about YouTube culture and YouTube video editing by looking at all my students' videos. And it led to more. It led to more. And they literally had 150,000, 200,000 um, views on their videos. And that's because they use all of these editing tools. They use these annotations and they click. When you click there, it lands on their channel or it lands on another video. So I've done this with some of my 30 goals now um, because, you know, one goal and then someone wants to go to the next goal, well, why wouldn't I interlink it? it I should have a link there that goes to. So I'm, I'm, these are things that I'm adding on that as well. So I'm learning from them. <laughs> you think they're learning from me, but really it's the other way around. I learn from them, my students. One of the best examples I've ever seen of this is totally awesome, which is the, and by the way, I realize I speak like an eighth grader. I actually had an eighth grader who um, interviewed me this weekend, and I noticed that I spoke just like that eighth grader who said awesome and totally in the email, and that's pretty much part of my vocabulary all of the time. So um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but it's not cool. So if you go to this um, link here, and if you visit it, then you're going to see that that's not cool to break in. And this is a great digital um, citizenship um, and, and internet safety site for kids. And so what it does is it gives them a scenario. Um, this one's called the break in. And what it is is it's this boy, and he's talking, and he's saying, my girlfriend, I saw her talking back and forth with this one guy and, on Facebook. And what should I do? Should I break into her Facebook account to see if she's cheating on me? So it gives you options um, around and check her messages. Should I hire a private detective? Should I just ask her? Her reaction will say it all. So the students get to choose A, B, or C. When they click on A, B, or C, it actually takes them to another video and it tells them what happened. So here we said C. And then he says, uh, or I said something like A, just to, because you know kids are going to choose the wrong answer. They're going to want to say break into your page. So I chose break, break into your page, and then it said something, oh, she broke up with me. Um, they ended up banging me from the page. They threw me off Facebook. I mean, it says something, the consequences of the action. And then it gives them the option to choose another one. Now would you like to choose B or C? And then they can click on C, and then on the C it says, that was the right one. I should have just asked her. So all of these um, videos, and, and this is the prime example that I've seen that I think is really awesome, but you could do that as well. You could do an online, um, you can ask your students um, questions, which is going to be your choice. You don't even have to do A, B, or C. You can do A or B, and then they can go back. Your students can make them. They can put little scenarios up there, uh, whatever it is. They can do it with math. Maybe they have a math question and it says something like, they make their own math problems and they say something like, oh, um, you know, uh, Mr. Jones rode the bus and went to go pick up Jane at Avenue B. 
And then he drove a little bit longer and he picked up um, Chris and Jacob uh, at the corner of avenues. And, and then it keeps going and then it says something like how many people, uh, but then, you know, Jane got off the bus because she forgot her homework and she had to run home. And then they come up with these scenarios and then they say, okay, choose A or B. And then you have virtually an immersive word problem that your student did online that one of the other students can take as a test. Or they can take that and they can choose. And if they get the wrong answer, it's okay because then they can go back and they can see the other one. But it immerses them. They can rewind it. They can. Um, so it's those are ways that you can use it in other topics as well. So you can use it in a variety of different ways. Another way is choose your own adventure. That's one of the most obvious ways. And there's some great ones there. One of the ones your students can either learn through playing. So this one is a great one for, that I use with language learners, adult students. It's called the haircut. It's a choose your own adventure song. So this guy decides um, that he wants to either cut his hair or grow it. Because in the past he was a hippie and he did have long hair. And then the students get to choose. And they sing the whole entire time, which I like. I love singing things. Um, so then you can choose grow. Of course I put grow. <laughs> and then it tells you this whole entire crazy story that happened because he chose to grow his hair. And you keep going on and you, you see it says run or stay. And it's like, no. The famous, um, what is it? <laughs> Sorry, I just love that thing. Um, okay, so you can go on there and you can um, you you can have them create their own choose your own adventure. So what I like to do is I like to immerse them in it, so they have an example, and then after the example, then I allow them to make their own, and then I show them how to do it. So then we can create our own interactive choose your own adventure stories. Um, and I'll, actually at ISTE, I, I, I wrote up to do a shop on this and how you can do this. Um, so hopefully, you know, I get, that session gets chosen for me. Me and John Spencer are supposed to show uh, teachers how they can do offline choose your own adventures uh, with technology. <laughs> uh, play a game. So you can have them to where they, because of the interlinking and the annotations, you can have them play games online like you can play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And all of these can be very educational. But let's say you want to do Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I remember I used to do this with PowerPoint. I had my students to review for a test. We would play Jeopardy and we would play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Well, you can do these online through YouTube now. So that way you can flip your classroom. You can have your students, instead of watching a video, they can play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire to review for a test. What is the benefit in that? You might say, oh, that takes a long time. Well, your students can make it, first of all. That's my always. Um, I'm a lazy teacher sometimes. I like to make my students make as many things as possible. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that because I can embed it. But I can use it every single year with a few tweaks. So that's why I like for them to do it. Um, but the other reason why I like them for, for them to do it is because the, every time you teach, you learn. So every time that they're making these kind of um, um, these kind of games and stuff and the choose your own adventure and all of that, they're learning as well. The brain processes it process this information, the questions, the answers, and all of that when they are creating this. So that's a way they can do that as well. I should warn you, um, you have to be 13 and older to use this. So if you are doing it with young learners or anything like that, which I have used with young learners, um, I end up making the videos. I take like their drawings and stuff like that, and we make like a class video. So you can see examples of my young learners, my four-year-olds in Germany um, to six-year-olds and stuff, making videos, but, but they're not on YouTube. There, um, the, the benefit if you have teens or university students or adults is that they tend to have their own YouTube channel sometimes. Not necessarily adults, but teens and university students usually do. And so the benefit is that they can actually upload it and then usually I just add it to a playlist. It's so easy to add everybody's projects on a playlist. And right now I'm actually doing that. I'm working with students online. Um, I'm teaching uh, teachers from um, different Spanish-speaking countries, so Spain, Guatemala, Argentina, and they're taking this online 
course for credit and what they can do now is they upload their, their videos to YouTube and after that I make a playlist. Um, they tell me where it's at and then I can go and I just tag it and make a playlist. It's very easy and simple for me to do that. So YouTube videos also come with transcripts and that can be very um, important for a lot of things. Uh, one of the lesson plans that I wrote and you can see later, I think that I added it in, in here, was um, it's at a lesson plan a day .tumblr.com. And so it's called How to Go Viral. And what they do is we talk, at first we have a discussion and we brainstorm what are the kind of videos that go viral. Um, and you can write that in the chat box right now. What are the kind of videos that you see that are the most popular on YouTube? What are the elements that they have in them? Um, and so, one of the, so then after they do that, they have to read the transcript of one of these videos. There's a video, there's a parody on Smash Mouth um, that tells how to make a viral video. And so I have them read the lyrics and I have them compare and contrast their notes of what they thought it was to make a viral video versus what Smash Mouth is saying. Um, so what, that's one of the things they do and then they go and they actually have to take those elements and they have to put them and choose in groups of four, they choose which is going to be the best one um, to make a viral video with. But one of the great things about transcripts too, if you've ever seen any speeches like the Randy Posh and all of that that I've used to teach my students, then you can find those transcripts in there. And one of the things that I like to have my language learners or um, to practice their writing and stuff is I have them fix the transcript because, um, and I use something called video notes and I'll show you that later, but um, they fix it because it has a problem, a lot of transcripts where it's not um, correct, it doesn't match the same words. And for my students that's good critical thinking, it's good for the, to improve their listening skills as well. There are other things that YouTube has done for educators as well because one of the things you're you're saying through, um, you're thinking through all this, I know that's coming up is how about the awful comments? And you know what? That is a problem. I absolutely detest those. I wish that people wouldn't do that. Um, people say really mean things on YouTube. And that's been a lesson for my students as well, my older students. Uh, not the kids, but the older ones, where we'll go, we'll see a great video, and then we'll look at the comments and we'll say, why do people do that? Why would somebody say these words that hurt people's feelings? And it's a good way to teach citizenship and make them aware. And make them aware because they're YouTube vis uh, visitors as well. And make them aware that the things that they read have shock value that they hurt people and um, they can tell, uh, they can tell by our faces and the faces of their peers how much when we just read a comment, how much it impacts us and, and brings us down. So I think YouTube, we can use it for that as well. But if we want to um, protect them from that, which I think is, is, is a good idea, um, you engage in, how do you do this? You can do this with YouTube EDU. So there's a lot of education uh, videos up there. And YouTube for teachers, they have a lot of, uh, where YouTube for teachers, you can find videos and everything and they put it in the platform so you don't necessarily have all those uh, bad comments. So you can go to YouTube.com for teachers, YouTube.com education and you can find lots of great videos and stuff and they filter the comments and everything. They have a discussion about them. Um, they used to do about, um, it's a great resource for people flipping the classroom. Um, and it also shows you real examples of teachers working with their learners. Um, it shows you videos of it, so you can get ideas from that as well. You can also use sites like SafeShare.tv, and you can paste the YouTube link, and then it puts it in a different platform. A lot of times, I just put it on my wiki, and if it's on my wiki, then it's going to not have those terrible comments. Uh, NiceYouTube.com is one that I, is my favorite. This is what I use. You can even put it in the nice ground. So what it does is you see where it takes that otter video, um, something like the honey badger that's viral and kids love the honey badger. Um, and then you can put in a happy birthday or any kind of background. Actually, you can choose the template. You don't even have to have any words in the background. Um, you can have to different things like um, you can have it where it's totally blank and um, just different things as well. They give you a whole bunch of things. And then they give you a unique web page URL. So that is nitrotube.com. I believe you don't even have to register for anything. It just does it for you. So it's a good way to send videos and greetings. So let me show you some other great tools that you can use to enhance your YouTube 
experience and learning for students. Bubbler, you can create interactive YouTube quizzes. It's really easy. You do have to sign up to be able to do it. It's blubber.tv. And the way it works is like this. Okay, you choose any video. Let's say that you want to teach business English or you're teaching your students about resume writing. And a lot of us do do that. I've done that lesson for thousands of classes probably. <laughs> um, and so what I've done is um, what you can do is you can choose one where it has a video interview because that's one of the great things about YouTube is there's a database of millions of videos out there that you could use for learning. So this is a great way to flip the classroom too. Um, outside they take this interactive YouTube quiz. They watch this little video segment, 16 seconds. So every 16 seconds you have to come up with a question in the video. That's the idea of Blubber. And so they watch this segment and it's showing a girl who's getting an interview. And you see it, it's real people, okay? Um, and then in 16 seconds, it comes up with, the, it pops up with this question. It says, in the first few seconds, what two things did she do wrong? And then the student has to choose this. She was late, she didn't shake hands, two, she bought her dog and her little brother, three, she wore a bad outfit. And so they analyze the video. It's one way to get them to analyze the video. And it's one way, if you're flipping the classroom, you can do it with any video on YouTube. So if you are flipping the classroom, it's a good way to make sure they're actually watching the video and they actually understand what's going on in the video. So you can use Blubber for those, in, uh, those as well. Another one that I really love to enhance YouTube is CaptionTube for adding speeches to videos. Um, I do this workshop quite a bit with the, 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 the babies, the, twin, the talking twin babies, the da da da, da 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 da. Um, so one of the things that you do with this um, is I have the Students, okay, so after we do the whole viral videos, and you probably put something on the chat like it's um, cat, okay? Oh, somebody asked me a really good question. I don't see who wrote it, but somebody said storyboarding. Yes, and in fact, I'm at GAETC, and we just did storyboarding. Uh, we did a storyboarding for these templates, and right now my students, they're using a storyboard template that I found on Google Templates. Google Templates, absolutely awesome. I use it time and time and again for um, all kinds of templates, for lessons and storyboards and um, slide presentation, all kinds of things. I love Google Templates. It's absolutely awesome. It's free. Um, and so we just did a storyboard for our movie. Um, um, we were, and my students are doing that right now. In fact, one of them just made one for a, um, a uh, they're creating movies. They're supposed to pitch movie ideas for a director, and they're doing the storyboard of what's their next movie based on a favorite like play or a favorite book or a chapter or something that they read. So one of the things that they do is um, when they're doing the video storyboarding template that I have them do, one of them just turned in one that I love, and he added pictures and everything because you can add the pictures. Um, and it created common pictures in each of the templates, or you can even draw. Now you can draw on the Google Doc, so that's why I had them do the storyboarding on there. And he did one from this, uh, what happened to Madam Butterfly's uh, son. So that's the movie idea he pitched. And then they go and they make the, they get to make one of the clips, one of the scenes from that storyboard. And so right now he did it through Animoto because I, I allow them to choose um, which video platform they want to use to create their video scene. So yes, I do do that. Um, and I find that it makes it better. I find that it, I, I, I like to integrate storyboarding, graphic organizers, content mapping. That's always my pre-writing task. That's, they brainstorm and that's how they get to make these things. Um, and they work in groups and pairs a lot. And so one of these is this one, the Da 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 Babies. And so they actually make, <laughs> my students actually make the scripts for this. Um, during the workshops, they do this for the Da 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 Babies. Uh, because you hear these two twins and they're talking to each other and we're trying to think of the, hey bro, why did you fart on my toy? And then they go back and forth and it's just a big joke and we love it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and they're using language. And, and, and if you think about it, it's back and forth language. To be able to flow with each other, to come up with a conversation and a dialogue that flows, that is funny, using humor and making sense. For my language learners, 
that's incredible for me. That's really using language in the way that it's supposed to be. It's authentic. It's natural. It's the way that we use language. So that's a higher thinking skill. That's better than reading a conversation in a book and role playing a conversation they don't even have any um, any choice in something that's already been created for them that doesn't make any sense to them because nobody says how do you do. Nobody says, hi, how are you? How do you do? <laughs> so for me, I like doing things like that with caption too. Uh, video notes. Um, they can take notes while doing the viewing. And video notes is, integrates with Google. There, I don't know if you know this, but if you go to your Google Drive, if you use Google Drive and Docs, and if you don't, you should. Because it will save you so much time. It will be exciting to be a teacher if you use the Google Docs. It's so amazing. I love it. Every day I discover something new. But if you go under create, the same way that you would create a spreadsheet, a document, a presentation, you can go in the bottom, it gives you an option for apps. And then you can click and add video notes as one of these apps. And what it does is it automatically takes, it takes the video. The video is on the side. The student goes on the side and it's timed. You can have it by the time. So each time that student is typing that person what the notes or what they're saying, if they haven't finished, it won't move on to the next segment of the video. You can choose that option. It's really great. And these are all free tools, by the way. But then it automatically uploads on their Google Drive. So they have all those notes. They can go back. They can edit them. They can fix them. They can do it whenever they want. Um, this is something that they can take and do at home as well. So you can understand whether or not they are learning for. So if you do flip the classroom, you could do it to where it's your lecture. I hope you don't do that. Um, I'm not really that keen on, on, on students taking video notes of lecture because that's what the professor has used this for. Instead, I do something like it's a YouTube video of lyrics, and then they're taking notes and they're correcting the lyrics. They're trying to add notes uh, about feedback or what they learn. My favorite is the science. I like the symphony of science, and I like them to hear great thinkers. And what they do is um, I'll give them maybe like um, a template of questions or something that I want them to reflect upon, or I'll just ask them very basic things. What are you know what inspired you? Do you believe in the universe? Do you believe there's life form out there? And ask them things like that. That's what I prefer. But if you're flipping the classroom and you're someone that does have a lecture and you're always lecturing all the time, then it is better if you take notes this way. So um, then you could do it this way. You could record your lectures and then they have them all the time and they would have them outside of the classroom. And I would suggest finally, we're going to wrap up, but one of the things is uh, create your own channel. It's very easy to do on YouTube. But this way you get to choose playlists. They get to contribute to the playlist. You get to put their assignments, their digital stories and all that. And if you go to mine, you can see a lot of different people on there. Um, you can see a lot of different projects that I like. You can see even my students' projects on there. Um, most recently, the ones that I worked with in Croatia and Slovenia, you can see commercials they did for the apps they invented to solve a problem for um, their community. Um, so, and some of them are really silly. So you can add playlists. I do a lot of my own video tutorials, screen tutorials, how to get them to use really cool tools that I think are pretty awesome. And I was so uh, surprised because one of the ones that I showed, which was English Central, I think it had 2,000 views, which means my students watch this, this uh, YouTube video screen tutorial that I did. 2,000, there was 2,000, Somebody watched it 2,000 times. <laughs> I was pretty excited because it was my screen tutorial. It wasn't somebody else's, so uh, that made me very happy. <laughs> and you can tell by the views what works. You can see what your students are seeing of yours. Things that you add up. Sometimes they just add up crazy pug videos for them to see. Sometimes they add up things for them to think about. Randy Posh, um, a TED Talk, something like that. I say, I give them missions. I say, here, for your mission, we're going to, things to inspire them. I do a lot of different things. Oh, I saw this music video. This is uh, here. I'm going to share it with you. And they go and they read it. You can post it up to Edmodo, anything like that. They know I updated. I updated with their suggestion. I say, oh, what's going to be in our Inspire the World playlist today? And I have all of those on uh, Pinterest. And then they can add to it. They ask, oh, well, teacher, I really like this video. This is what inspires me. We've done personal theme songs. Our students can go and they can pin up their personal theme songs and things like that, all with YouTube videos. And you can finally use Google Plus. Google Plus is a great way to get your students to learn with video. Um, they can watch a video together. 
They can do little funny effects here. Dr. Seuss, she's wearing a tiara. Now you can meme your own face. It's really awesome. You can have a chat and you can talk about the video. I can even post. I can have up to 10 students there. Or better yet, they get into their groups of four and they do this and they record the session and they post it online so that I know that they had that group discussion, that they really talked about the video. You can put TED Talks, all kinds of stuff. They can even edit their own document. It's awesome. Um, and then there's a lot of places you can get free YouTube lessons. Uh, Lessonstream.org has my favorite. I've used several of the lesson plans there. They're all in PDF. They give you objectives. They give you the pre-writing, the during writing. They tell you how to set up the classroom. They spell it all out for you. If you're running out of an idea and you need a good lesson plan, one that your students are really going to like, go to any of these places. FilmEnglish.com, DesignerLessons.org. EsoCourses.com, CollinsABCs.com, incredible. An entire school based on YouTube videos for young learners, for kids. Her videos are aimed for two-year-olds all the way to six-year-olds. I love Cullen. You will be amazed by the magnificence that is Cullen. She's just incredible. They learn by looking at uh, finger puppets, finger plays, songs. They learn songs, and it's an online school for kids. How genius is that? And simpleenglishvideos.com. All of those are great places to find uh, video lessons. That's what Lesson Stream looks like. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. EnglishCentral.com. It allows you to practice your pronunciation. You have language learners and stuff. Best site ever. And this is the one that has the 2,000 hits. And it ranks them. They actually go through rankings. Um, they hear popular videos, YouTube videos, movies, and all of that. And then they speak in the mic, and it rates the pronunciation. It says, nope, got to do it again. And it's great because they, they go with this community. There's thousands and thousands. It's free. It's so cool what that does. Um, you can also um, do EnglishYapper.com. It has the same kind of principles. You see here, I miss you, slipped away. Avril Lavigne, it teaches them. Do chance to look up vocabulary. You can even click on the vocabulary, and you can check out the different dictionaries to see. You can practice pronunciation. It's awesome. There's a great app called Look Away. Um, it's free. It's been having kinks. But basically, if you're teaching with YouTube in the classroom, if your students look away from the video, the video stops playing. So make sure that they look at the video and they're paying attention. But for you, it's really good for cooking. So if you need to turn around and then pause the video until you can look back at it and then the video starts again. It does it all through your eyes. It's just your based learning app and it's free. So it's very cool. You should try it out even just for that. Create Play easily with PlayTube. So there's a lot of places where you can just have a playlist on PlayTube. I know this is a lot of stuff, so I'm just kind of winging by it. You can go, you can access the slides, um, you can access all the resources, and like I said, when your plate is full, if you already found that thing that made you really excited, you test those two or three things out in your plate, you digest them, you eat them, you try them with your students. If you really like them and you want to go back for more, then you can use any of these extra tools. But if not, then you can, um, and it didn't work out for you, then still come back and try something else because that's what you do at a buffet. Sometimes you get things that are really yucky, and sometimes you get things that are really delicious. I don't know your classroom setting, so I'm showing you all these great things. To get a learn, you can have up to seven on a video. They watch the videos together. They write all over the iPad. They highlight and draw and take notes. It's awesome. Um, and then finally, that's how I did mine. You can go and you can see my examples at dosenglish.wikispaces.com. That was the one for the adults. You see how I integrate a lot of different technologies for my German students. Um, and then you can even see the ones that I did for my young learners. That's actually englishstorytime.pbworks.com. And you can see the videos there. I haven't updated them for a while because it was with my learners in Germany. So um, the one that's on um, the English story time, some of the videos, since they did an upgrade, you can't see the video. Um, and then you can go find me to the bit.ly.youtube video um, tool. And that's where you see everything. So thank you so much for attending on a Saturday. I hope you had fun with me. And um, don't worry, uh, I am not going to speak some more. <laughs> I know that's what you're saying because it's over, and you really did want me to speak some more. <laughs> that's my plug, Rocco, and thank you so much. Um, so if you have any questions.
You can mess with me at Shell Terrell <laughs> on Twitter or I'll put my blog. Oh, well, good, Roxanne. I love that. <laughs> Roxanne says, my brain is exploding in a good way. Thanks, Shelly. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. <laughs> yes, that Peggy is awesome. She she gets those links in. Okay, so what are some of the questions? Uh, yes, I actually have that written down. So Wes asked, do you have a planning sheet for the Choose Your Own Adventure? Yes, I do. Um, what I'm, I, at the moment, I'm, uh, we have it, uh, but we were going to do it for the ISTE workshop. So what I can do is I can kind of, uh, I can just send it to you guys. So whoever wants to email me or uh, hit me up through uh, Twitter, then I can do it because um, we're going to make it public like right after that. Uh, we're doing an open online conference and, uh, I mean, course, and then we're going to put it through that as well. Um, so that's one of the, so I can, if you get me through Twitter and just tell me, I'll, I'll, I'll send that. Um, I'll be reminded to send that. And I'm actually doing it with my online course right now, so I kind of have to do it privately too because um, I don't want them to look and think that I'm, well I am, but <laughs> I'm making everything from the course that I've produced. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Peggy asked a good uh, question. I don't think I've heard of Google Plus. Is that only for schools or Google for Education? No, it's Google Plus Hangout. So what I'm going to do is um, there's a video. I mean, there's actually a webinar I did just on that. Um, it's worth knowing. It's uh, 13 years old or older to use it, but you can do so much with it. Um, and if you would like practice using it, okay, so Google is this giant, right? This is the best way to explain it. And it has all these little entities in it. And all of these, it's like having a big company, like, you know, you have the airliners, and you have Star Alliance, and then under Star Alliance, you have United Airlines, and you have all these other little airlines. Well, Google's the same. So Google has this thing called Plus. And when you join Plus, and a lot of times, um, it's really easy once you have, uh, you can do it actually through a, U a Yahoo, you can do it even with Yahoo Mail, but you can do it with your Google Mail. Um, the great thing, of course, is that um, you can do things like you can be in a Hangout. A hangout is like Skype for Google, but it's cooler because it's free with 10 participants. And you can edit the same document together. You can record your sessions. You can um, watch videos like I was showing you. So you just go to plus.google.com. Um, and, and, and I'm actually doing, um, let me put the link to my, e uh, my open online course. That's what I'll do. And then you can even try it out because, you know, you can always leave an open online course. It's free, by the way. Um, but the great thing about it, um, it's, it's a great opportunity. We're going to use Google tools and stuff and Google communities and all that. And what we do is we're creating our own ebook, your own e-textbook with everyone who joins the MOOC. Um, well, the open online course, you just through five weeks. In five weeks, that's what we're doing. Um, so here it is. I'm going to go ahead and add it. It's ebookevo.pbworks.com. It doesn't really start till January. Uh, it's January to fe February. And then you can learn how to use all these cool Google tools that are really amazing. And one of them is Google Plus. Um, and already you can see the bookmarks. So even if you just want to go to that page and you want to look at the bookmarks, and it gives you Google Plus tutorials. It gives you Google Community tutorials. It tells you how to set up so you can get more of an idea. Um, and that, that's what you can do. <laughs> but you have a chance to work with teachers all over the world and make 
a book together, whether it be for kindergarten science or whether it be for math for sixth graders. Thanks, Shelley. Or something. So I do it, have some other questions, and I apologize <laughs> in advance if I ask. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Oh, no problem. Ask me because I don't know what questions are there. <laughs> I am so sorry, but it looks like Lori is just having issues with her microphone, and it cuts out and comes back in. So um, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get to those extra questions, but if any of you asked one earlier in the chat, if you could just re-ask it right now in the chat and Shelly will see it. And otherwise, we have gone way over time, but what a jam-packed, fabulous session. Thank you so much, Shelly. Um, let, me, let me go ahead and just do this quick wrap-up with our show because we always want you to know what our upcoming shows are going to be. And we're very excited that Lori Moffitt is going to be our November featured teacher next month or next week. And she has some great things she's doing with her students that she's going to be sharing with us. Um, we're also doing a, a special featured session on EdCamps direct and live from EdCamp New Jersey. And they're going to be streaming in and joining us with people there talking about what are the benefits of EdCamps, how you can do them, those kinds of things. So that's November 23rd. No show on November 30th because that's Thanksgiving weekend in the U.S. And then December 7th, we have an awesome panel of people coming from Apache Junction, Arizona, doing present a presentation about all the great things they're doing with Web 2.0 tools in third grade. Also want to let you know that the Global Ed Conference is coming up November 18th to the 22nd. So be sure to check that out. Um, this uh, link will take you there. This is for globaleducationconference.com. You can sign up and get all the notifications. And even now, they are accepting um, presentation proposals. So get your presentation proposal in by going to that site. Also, we have some new webinars starting up next week. November 12th is going to be the first in a series, I think, of four webinars with Barbara Bray and Kathleen McClaskey and some of their teaching colleagues all on personalizing learning. Those are going to be wonderful examples of things you can do to personalize learning in your classroom. So that's on our Classroom 2.0 Live calendar. So you can get the details there. Um, remember to nominate a featured teacher for us. You can nominate yourself or someone else. And that's the way we find the amazing teachers to come and share with all of you. You will get a, a survey popping up at the end when you log out that you can complete to request a PD certificate for today. And please use it also to indicate if you're interested in becoming a part of our advisory team to help us find great presenters and great topics for our, our regular shows. This is the PD certificate you'll get by completing that survey. And it will be emailed out later today. Also, be sure to check out our collections on iTunes U. You can get video or audio, so you can listen to these sessions while you're away from your computer. And you can also subscribe to the RSS feed. So again, huge thank you to Shelley Terrell for such an amazing show. And thanks to all of you for spending your Saturday time with us. You are all awesome as educators, and we appreciate you so much. So everyone, be sure to log out of the session so the recording will process, and then it will uh, the recording link will be posted on our blog post in the archives within a few hours today. Some of the links go up immediately, and then it takes a little while to get the full video recording up. But please join us. Thanks, everyone, and have a great weekend.